Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. I am MD Navid Bilanwar and the title of my selected paper for the reading summary is A Probabilistic Distance-Based Modeling and Analysis for Cellular Networks with Underlying Device-to-Device -device Communications. So here you can see the uh, paper that I am going to present today. This uh, paper was published in IEEE in 2017 uh, in a well-known journal and you can see the number of uh, the authors. There are five authors uh, in this paper. In this introduction part, I would like to talk about uh, the device-to-device -device communication or D2D communication. During this paper publication, the high demand of uh, data traffic um, and the increase mobile devices and uh, the tremendous uh, increase of mobile devices causes a lot of trouble for the underlying cellular networks because in cellular networks all the traffic must go through the base station when the traffic goes higher or the data rate becomes higher it creates a lot of trouble for the base station or it creates a lot of load to minimize this problem there are different technologies have been studied and discovered and one of the technology at that moment was uh, D2D and D2D communication two devices for example these two mobile you can see from this figure could communicate to each other without taking much help from the underlying network infrastructure. The base station for example here is only responsible for the initial connection establishment for example the authentication and to uh, location detection afterwards these two devices could directly communicate to each other and sending a lot of data without go through all the data by the base station. Although D2D provides opportunity to improve the network performance, but it has to face challenges. One of the, one of the serious challenges is uh, the possible interference between D2D and cellular links and that between D2D links due to spectrum sharing. Okay, let's consider an example. A pair of D2D UEs, which is known as GUEs, reuse the uplink cellular resources. A D2D communication might be affected by a simultaneous transmission from a cellular UE to the base station. Because both of the communication are occurring with the same uplink resources. As a result, what could be happen? So this problem lead to poor quality of received signal at the base station because it's accumulated interference from the transmission device. The another consequence that you can see is the performance of each D2D pairs itself will be degraded due to the inter D2D interference. Here is a scenario that I am illustrating of the interference. In the center, this is the base station we can consider, and there are two pair of D2D devices are communicating. And here, this is another CEV, a cellular user interface equipments. So now, if these uh, two pairs or the cellular uh, EV try to communicate with the same desired signal or resources, which could lead an interference between each other. For example, here, these devices is a, tra uh, is a transmitter and this is the receiver. So they are communicating to each other and this D2D is the transmitter and this is the receiver. They are communicating to each other, but uh, with the same signal. And here, the CV also try to communicate with this base station with the same desired signal. So we know that most of the interference uh, occur in the, the receiver so that means uh, when they send data from this d2d transmitter to the base station or from this d2d uh, d2d uh, transmission to the base station and uh, see with the transmission all are creating uh, the interference here or this series also could interfere to this receiver end or here also the receiver end we could get the interference so so we can see this is a big challenges, um, a problematic issues that could occur if they're sharing um, the same resources at the same time. 
So this is uh, known as a D2D inter interference or D2D to uh, CV link interference. To produce an optimized solution, this paper pro proposes a new analytical framework based on the probabilistic distance and um, path loss model. The steps are as follows. So, in a probabilistic distance is used uh, to, to obtain distance uh, distribution under some predefined environment. So, obtain dist uh, distance distribution one of the crucial part and the next step use the distance distribution in a general path loss model to update the interference distribution of signal and signal to interference plus noise ratio known as the SINR of the cellular network by which different network performance metrics such as outage probability and capacity can be analyzed with underlying D2D communication. Uh, this paper considered two types of uh, system model. And at the left hand side, you can see this is one model that is with considering no GR, and the right hand side uh, is considering GR. GR means the card region. Uh, and in this uh, first figure, you can see the center is the base station, and there are number of uh, DU nodes are deployed. For example, all the circular nodes are the DU nodes. And the square shape nodes is um, considered as a CEV, the cellular user equipment. So there are uh, the, all the DE, uh, DU equipments are communicating to each other and considered as a pair. So here it is a pair. It's a, another pair and this is the, another pair of communication is going on. Um, the black solid color arrows means that a device wanted to transmit uh, in the particular direction whereas the red dashes color means they are creating the interference so here you can see this is a uh, 3d to d communication going on and because of that uh, it also causes the uh, interference to the other receivers on the right hand side considering the gr all the nodes are deployed outside the gr region so this is the GR region and all the devices D to D communication going on outside the D, uh, GR region and the CEV also is outside and here you can see the CV sending data to base station and this uh, this node is sending data to this node D to D communication here D to D communication going on but here we all also can see the uh, interference is uh, Occurring, for example, the base station when CEV is sending data to the base station, it is also getting interference from from this side and also from the this side. In the similar way, the other nodes also facing the interference. So to uh, to solve this problem or to optimize uh, uh, to get an optimized solution or improve the network performance, this paper uh, proposed some solution and a model. So we're going to discuss in the further slides. Uh, to calculate the distance from a reference point to a random point, this proposed model uses a method known as the triangulation. And you can see the, the this triangulation method is shown here. Uh, here that what, what is done is um, taken any particular cellular cell and then divide the cellular cell in multiple triangular pieces. For example, here you can see there are six pieces is done in this uh, particular cell, uh, cell. And then this concept is used to calculate uh, the distance. Um, and for the first uh, equation, if you see the first equation, this is considering with no GR. That means the cellular cell has no GR region. And the distribution, this distribution can be calculated using this following equation where i is the iteration for example the starting number of the as uh, of the of the triangle number and uh, k is the <coughs> highest number uh, si is the area of a particular triangle and s is the total area of the cell uh, f delta i d is the uh, uh, cdf uh, the the distribution of uh, that uh, particular area and then the second equation is used when considering the GR. We know in the GR, the cellular 
cell is uh, divided into two parts and the inside this is called the uh, gr and outside this is called the ring region so that's why with the equation has uh, uh, we change than the before one so here the distance is calculated using this formula where the first part considering the gr region and the second part is considering the ring region and sgr is the um, Gartner region area divided by S, so that means it calculates uh, calculating the probability that a node, uh, the possibility that a node will be lie inside the Gartner region, and this is the again the CDF of the Gartner region, and here the S, uh, SGR bar by S means the the probability that a node will lie in the ring region multiply with the CDF of that region. So in this way, it will going to calculate the distance of uh, uh, any node from a base station. Uh, to determine or obtaining the different distribution, this paper has uh, the following distribution, the signal or interference distribution. So it conducts a physical interference model based performance analysis. So which focuses on the, the cumulative interference at the specific receiver. And for the SNR distribution, this paper developed numerical algorithm based on equation 28 and 29 in the paper that can obtain the corresponding numerical result promptly and um, accurately according to the different network setting and parameters. The following figure in this slide is showing the performance of calculation, the uh, distance or uh, the distance distribution of the distance from the base station to a random point associated with the irregular cell. Uh, here you can see um, different uh, graphs over there and for example if I consider that this one it means uh, the distance from uh, base station to a particular K2 distance or here this is the base station to K3 distance and uh, this results uh, numerical results um, are verified with the simulation and you can see it is uh, verified uh, accurately with the simulation result um, and then there is another information you can see also for example the lambda 1 uh, colon lambda 2 is here um, when it is set to 1 colon 1 that means that is the same probability that the numbers of the, the nodes will be equally distributed in the guard region and the ring region whereas for the 10 colon 1 means that the distribution will not be equal so some of the uh, number of the nodes in the guard region will be changed uh, of the uh, node in the ring region. But anyway, the both of the cases, the performance uh, of the numerical results uh, uh, satisfy the simulation result. In this graph, uh, we can see two uh, graphs. One is interference distribution and this is SINR distribution. To check the performance evolution of this model, how it calculates um, accurately the interference distribution and SINR distribution. For this particular experiment, the number of uh, pairs of uh, D2D devices are fixed. It's fixed to uh, 11. And then the radius of the guard region is changed from 50 to 150. That means the D2D devices are moving further away from the base station, starting from 50 to 150 meter. And let's see what about the uh, interference distribution. You can see from this first graph, uh, the uh, x-axis is the cumulative interference, DBA, uh, DBM, and the y-axis is the distribution, um, is uh, CDF. So when the nodes are uh, moving further away, so this is 150. So distance from the base station to the particular D to D devices is further away from the base station. The CDF is getting better. Uh, the interference is, uh, uh, is getting low hamper, low hamper or uh, the another one, for example, the, uh, the shorter range, uh, it has the high impact on the base station. But uh, whereas for the SINR, uh, it's also showing the same characteristics. For example, uh, it is moving in this direction. That means the R is changing from 50 to 150 in this direction so last one this curve means that it is a 150 meter away from the base station due to the devices and sin is getting higher so it's uh, getting better and better so it has less affected the base station so both of the cases it can be seen that the um, numerical model 
a numerical analysis satisfy the simulation results correctly. This slide shows the another result evolution of the interference distribution and SINR distribution. But in this case, you are, we are considering here not the base station, but uh, with the uh, with, uh, intra uh, D2D device interference. So we know from the beginning that the interference could occur not only from the base station, but uh, 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 the device to device communication itself could uh, create interference to each other. For this particular experiment, uh, the radius of the guard region was fixed to 100 meter, and this time, the n or the number of uh, uh, D2D uh, pairs are changing from uh, 1 to 21 and see and check the performance how it looks like. Let's start with the first one, the interference distribution. You can see the first one. Uh, so here the n should start from 1 and when the number of uh, pair was 1, it has less impact of the other interference, other nodes interference because there are no D2D device pairs except only one and it creates it, it gets interference or it creates interference to only one node and this is the with the CUE because there's no other D2D devices over there to interfere so but when we change uh, the number of the uh, D2D pairs it's getting the uh, CDF is shifting from here to here and is getting forced um, from this um, signal we can see and it also reflected in SINR distribution as well. So in SINR, you can see when uh, the number of uh, N was equals to 1, it has a high SINR. That means it was a good condition. But when the N was getting higher and higher in this direction, uh, the SINR getting lower and lower, that means the interference was a uh, uh, high impact on the performance. So both of the cases, the numerical model uh, has verified with the simulation result correctly. You can see from this graph. So to conclude, the proposed framework um, is helpful for network planners to effectively tune the network parameters and thus to achieve the optimum system performance for both cellular and D2D communications. Although it has uh, done significant work, but uh, the further investigation can be done by modeling and analyzing the downlink link reusing scenario, the multi-cell scenarios, and the non-uniform distribution of e UEs, uh, considering the other channel impairments such as shadowing and fast fading could be, could be interesting in the, uh, the future work. So this is all from my side. So if you have any question, I'm happy to answer. Thank you.